What's going on guys? So today I'm going to be doing a teardown of the Sima X5C. We'll uh, take a look into how it's built and what controls it. So yeah, um, basically it's a six axis stabilized quadcopter, Chinese, but it's actually really good. Um, this one does not have the camera, so it's just got, I already took the battery hatch off actually, but it's got LEDs for direction. Um, geared motors, which is an interesting choice, but I will explain why they did that later. And yeah, it's actually not a bad quad, and it's a great first quad to learn how to fly. The price is right, uh, and super cheap, and it's really hard to break. So yeah, um, let's get started. Pop off these landing gear. First, I'm going to take off the props. Okay, so uh, the next thing you'll notice is that there are a ton of screws. I mean, there are so many screws holding this thing together. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, um, like 24 of them. So, no, wait, 26. We're up to 26. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to fast forward through this because it, who wants to see anyone unscrew something? Okay, so got all the screws out, and first thing you'll notice is it's kind of this snap together construction with um, one center guy that comes out first to get to all the electronics, which is kind of cool. Okay, so in here it's actually fairly messy, uh, but it's pretty much what you'd expect. So. Each motor has some motor wires and terminals to mount them on. Uh, we've got LEDs as well, so here's the motors, here's the LED strips, same for this side. Uh, it's very clear that it was hand soldered, and mine actually looks like it has a wire broken right there. Uh, but that's for the camera connection, which I don't use anyway. Um, yeah, so fairly standard, um, this kind of looks like a bodge cap, I don't know what that's doing there. So I'm actually going to clip these off. So I'll get it off the side. Okay, so it looks like they gooped up some of this guy. Uh, no surprise here. And interesting. So the main processor on here is the Mini 54 ZAN, which is the same processor used in the Hubson X4. Uh, it seems like a fairly popular choice for these quadcopters. I think it's uh, ARM Cortex-M0, 16K flash, uh, with a pretty decent set of peripherals. I think max 19 IO pins, um, all your general serial communications, and of course SWI debug and programming. So it's only three wires. Okay, so then we've got an InVincense MPU 6050, which is the same one also used on the Hubson. Uh, maybe I'll do a Hubson teardown here later on, but that is a six axis accelerometer gyro IMU. I can probably guess what this last guy is. So this is gonna be the 2.4 gigahertz trans radio transceiver for the remote control capability. That external crystal oscillator is a pretty big giveaway. So let's see if I can peel this goop off. Actually pretty impressed they gooped that down it's kind of hard to get this goop off without also scraping off the part number okay so I finally got that goop off there it looks like the radio transceiver is the Beckon BK2523 2423 excuse me other than that it's a pretty standard board I mean they impact they pack a, a decent amount of uh, goodies in here there's some stuff on the back side too, so we'll take a look at that next. The really impressive thing about all of these cheap toy quadcopter controllers is that they're pretty much all built on two-sided PCBs. Okay, so after further investigation, I actually realized that this uses the MPU 6050. Yeah, so the Hubson X4 uses the 3050C, and this uses the 6050C. 
This one is a little bit different because it's actually uh, completely self-contained. It's a six-axis gyro and accelerometer, as opposed to the 3050, which relies on an external accelerometer. Um, and then the Hubson, it's some sort of no-name one. So that guy right there, like I said, it's just a three-axis gyro, three-axis accelerometer together to, f to basically make an IMU. That's about it. 1.8 volts, uh, I2C output. So but here's just a little bit closer up look at the actual circuit board. Uh, main processor, that's that Mini 54. We've got the IMU gyro. We've got the transceiver. And then on the back here, we've got our dual package and channel MOSFETs. Um, clamping diodes for the output and linear regulators for the supplies. Uh, so that's about it. Yeah, so that's pretty much all there is for the board itself. You can see the antenna here just soldered on there. Dump out some of these screws. They're everywhere because there's a million of them. The LED strips are pretty interesting. They're just basically two LEDs on each little small circuit board. I'm actually surprised they even took the time to make a circuit board for them. And it looks like the coating, there's a little coating on here. It looks like that coating is actually what determines the color. I might be wrong on that. All right, so now let's take a look at the motor and the drive system. I already got the screws out there, so I think I can just sort of pop this off. Let's see. So these actually use a fairly interesting motor setup. Uh, basically, I think most of the Sima, I had one on my X1, and they use the same same setup. And in fact, it looks like the same plastic a little plastic mount just put in a different package. So this is how Sima drives their quads. Basically they've got one of these small uh, pager-like motors or likewise with a gear. So they're actually using a geared system. The downside of this is that there's some slop. So there's a noticeable amount of slop between the propellers, between the gears, everything kind of moves around. But the upside of this is that they're gearing this for more torque out of a smaller motor. So what you get is the ability to drive one of these larger props, I think they're four or five inches, with a smaller gear motor. Usually you wouldn't have the ability to drive a prop that size off of one of these smaller motors. So for example, the Hubson, excuse my broken Hubson, uses direct drive, but the props are much smaller and spin at a much higher rate. So that's, a, that's an interesting design choice. I haven't had one break yet, but if they do, they can be a pretty big pain to replace. I mean, you have to desolder this, take the whole thing apart. Um, honestly, if your motor goes out, you're probably just better off buying a whole new quad. So that's been my quick teardown of the Sima X5C. And it's pretty interesting little craft, pretty standard, but nonetheless, they've got some good features in there. Uh, pretty much exactly what you'd expect for a toy quad in this price range and it uses similar construction to almost everything on the market. So that being said, leave any questions or comments uh, in the comments section. If you liked it, give it a like, it always helps. And let me know what other kind of teardowns you guys would like to see here on this channel.